Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be using the FET simulation gases intro to talk about kinetic theory. So in the last video, we spoke about the relationship between pressure, temperature and volume of a gas. And of course, there were three different relationships that we went over. This is basically to talk about the physics about why, why is it then in the first relationship, if I click volume as constant, why is it when I increase the temperature, why does the pressure increase? So remember the the relationship between these two is P1 over T1 is P2 over T2. That means that pressure and temperature, as long as that's in Kelvin, they're directly proportional. So what I'll do is I'll increase the temperature and I want you to look at the gas particles. And hopefully you can see as I'm heating up the gas that they're starting to move faster. So of course, that's the first thing you could talk about. So you could say as the temperature increases, the gas particles move faster their velocity is obviously increasing and therefore they have more kinetic energy. Now, if they have more kinetic energy and are moving faster, think next about the, the collisions between those gas particles and the side walls. So when they collide with the side walls, will they be doing that with the same force, a greater force or a smaller force? Well, actually, if they're moving faster, the force of each collision would actually be larger. Next thing is, of course, and you can see this just by looking at the simulation, is that we'll have more collisions per second. So basically, as temperature increases, what we need to mention is that the gas particles have more kinetic energy, that the force of each collision between the gas particles and the side walls is more forceful, and also that we have more collisions per second between the gas particles and the side walls. So that's our first relationship between pressure and temperature. I'm going to cool this down to roughly where it was before. What I could do, I can make a challenge, see if I can stop in exactly 273. You know it's not going to happen, but it's going to be there. Oh my goodness, what a man. Next, I'm going to keep temperature constant. Uh, important thing here is, of course, and I've not mentioned this yet, these relationships only work, the first one and the last one, if temperature's in Kelvin. Doesn't work if the temperature is in degrees Celsius. So when you're doing a mathematical question, if it's telling you the temperature in degrees Celsius, convert that to Kelvin. Now, as I said, I'm keeping temperature constant. I'm looking at the relationship now between pressure and the volume. Now, remember in this uh, simulation, it doesn't actually tell us the volume of that container, but I can get a measure of the width of this container. And obviously, if the width was going to, as I do now, if the width was going to half, say from 10 nanometers to 5 nanometers, and then, of course, the volume of the container would be halving as well. I'm going to go back to 10. And let's just have a look at that pressure. So at 10 nanometers, the pressure is 5,394. When I then half the volume by halving that width. So when volume is halved, then basically that pressure's doubled. Now, what I've not done is I've not introduced any heat energy. So the particles are not moving any faster. They don't have any more, any less kinetic energy than they had before. So we're not going to mention that. But just by looking at the simulation, you can see obviously they're moving around in a far smaller space. So when we're decreasing that volume, we obviously have more collisions between the particles and the side walls per second. And that's why the pressure is increasing. And obviously, if we increase that volume, what would happen is we would have less collisions between the particles and the side walls. What we can't mention is we don't mention the kinetic energy, it's not changing. And we don't mention the force of each collision. Because as I said, we've not changed the kinetic energy or the speed of the particles. So obviously the force of each collision is just the same as it was before. But smaller volume, we have more collisions per second. And therefore what's happened is the pressure's increased. And as I said, it's actually that the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional. So when I half the volume, double the pressure, or double the volume, half the pressure. The last thing I'm going to do is to keep pressure the same and change the temperature. Again, I'm going to say this one last time, just make sure that temperature is in Kelvin. And when I increase the temperature, like so, what's happening is the volume is changing. So if the volume is free to change, as temperature increases, volume increases, 
And as temperature decreases, volume decreases. So why is it, when I'm increasing the temperature, why is the volume increasing? Well, this is much like the first relationship. So the first thing I could say is when I'm adding heat energy, the particles are speeding up and therefore have more kinetic energy. Much like before, I can talk about the fact that we have more collisions between the particles in the sidewalls per second. And again, I can say that the force of each of these collisions is greater. You know, what differs between this relationship and the first one is that this volume is free to change. Now, what happened before, remember, as I increased the temperature, we had, a, remember the particles had more kinetic energy, more collisions between the particles and the sidewalls per second, and more forceful collisions between the particles and the sidewalls, and the pressure increased. But beforehand, when the pressure increased, the volume, because of the, the nature of the container, it wasn't able to increase. Well, this volume can increase. So when the pressure inside increases, we obviously then have a larger pressure inside the container than we have outside. And if volume can increase, just like say a balloon itself, if you were to heat up a balloon, the volume of that gas, the volume of the balloon, of course, would increase. So when the pressure increases inside this container, if that's greater than the pressure outside, then of course the volume is going to increase until the two are equal, until the pressure inside the gas is equal to the pressure outside. So it's much like the same one, as temperature increase, or much like the first one I should say, as the temperature increases, the kinetic energy of the particles increases, we have more collisions per second between the gas particles and the side walls, the force of each collision is greater, and therefore when the pressure inside increases, if volume is free to change, then obviously the volume of this container will increase until it reaches a point where the pressure inside is equal to the pressure outside. And there we have it. So that's the kinetic theory. There is another video, one of the live videos that I did several years ago, which goes into this in a little bit more detail, shows all the graphs between, say, pressure and temperature, pressure and volume, and so on. So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description and obviously a link up in the top right that you can follow. But that's us for now. And we'll see you in the next video.